Now let's take a closer look at the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is ultimately controlled by the brain, the hypothalamus. In the hypothalamus, the hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone or GNRH is released. GNRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to release two hormones, FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. The follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone target the ovaries. As the follicle stimulating hormone begins to rise, the follicle begins to grow. As the follicle begins to grow, the follicle secretes estrogen. As estrogen levels rise, the endometrium wall begins to build. At some point, the level of estrogen reaches a peak, and that peak in estrogen levels actually has a positive stimulating effect on the anterior pituitary, causing a surge in release of LH and FSH. This spike in LH stimulates ovulation. Notice that ovulation occurs at a time when the endometrium wall has built up. This is to ensure that if this egg is to be fertilized, that it implants in a very thick endometrium wall. After ovulation, the cells of the follicle become the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum secretes high levels of progesterone and estrogen. We see the rising levels of progesterone as the corpus luteum comes into being. These high levels of estrogen and progesterone have an inhibitory effect on the anterior on the pituitary hypothalamus system, suppressing FSH and LH levels, ensuring that we do not mature a new follicle while this egg is still has the possibility of um, being fertilized. The high levels of progesterone help maintain this thick endometrium wall. Eventually, the corpus luteum begins to break down. As it does, our levels of progesterone drop off drastically. This drop in estrogen and progesterone that we see here initiates the, the, the new phase, or the new uterine phase starting, as the endometrium wall begins to break down and we have menstruation, or the flow phase. As estrogen and progesterone levels drop, we get, rid of the, we get rid of this inhibition effect here, and FSH and LH can start to rise once again, and we can start to mature a new follicle. If, however, a pregnancy does occur, the embryo will secrete a hormone called HGC, or HCG, HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. The human chorionic gonadotropin hormone will keep stimulating the uh, corpus luteum so it doesn't break down, so we keep our levels of progesterone and estrogen high, so we keep the endometrium well thick to sustain the pregnancy. Let's look at that again with a different picture. In this chart, we see all four hormones on one graph, so it may be more helpful. We can also see the, what's happening at the ovary and what's happening in the uterus all in one picture. We also see a slight change in body temperature. Uh, during ovulation, uh, maintaining through the, uh, the luteal phase, but it's less than one degree, so it's not that big of a deal. But let's look at this uh, one more time. So day one of our new cycle, of our new menstrual cycle, is the first day of flow phase as the endometrium wall is breaking down. During this time, levels of FSH, which is uh, in, in red here, and LH, which is in green, start to rise. As FSH and LH start to rise, upon stimulation from the uh, gonadotropin release hormone from the hypothalamus, the endometrium wall begins to build back up. Also, I'm um, sorry, so let me say that again. As FSH and LH start to rise, a new follicle starts to mature, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. As the follicle matures, the maturing follicle starts secreting estrogen, so we see estrogen levels start to rise as the follicle matures. As estrogen levels rise, we see the buildup of the endometrium wall. When the estrogen levels reach a certain peak, it stimulates a spike in LH, and an, to a lesser extent, a spike in FSH. This spike of LH, or luteinizing hormone, causes ovulation. After ovulation, the cells of the follicle become the corpus luteum, and the corpus luteum secretes progesterone. This high levels of progesterone, the corpus luteum also secretes estrogen that we see here. This high level of estrogen and progesterone suppress FSH and LH and keep them low so we don't start stimulating a new follicle. The high levels of progesterone and estrogen also maintain the uterine wall's thickness. If 
the corpus luteum degenerates, our levels of progesterone and estrogen begin to drop, and we have our new flow phase as the endometrium wall breaks down, and we release the suppression of the FSH and LH, and they can start to rise again uh, over on this side, rising again, so we have a new follicle starting. And since it's a cycle, we start all over again. Let's take one more look with a slightly different drawing. This may or may not be more helpful, but let's see. Let's make that right. Okay, let's look at it this way. So, let's follow the numbers. One, the hypothalamus releases a gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which stimulates the pituitary gland. Two, the pituitary gland secretes its FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, which stimulates both ovaries, or stimulates the ovaries. Uh, and inside the ovary, dot, 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 we see the follicle beginning to mature. The maturing follicle secretes estrogen. Estrogen has an effect on the brain. It also prepares the uterus, the buildup of the endometrium. The effect of estrogen, in this case, on the um, on the brain at low levels is inhibitory, but at high levels causes a surge in LH, a surge in luteinizing hormone. This surge in luteinizing hormone causes ovulation. After ovulation, the follicle cells become the corpus luteum, secreting progesterone. The progesterone has an inhibitory effect on the hypothalamus pituitary system, uh, preventing a new follicle from maturing, and a stimulating effect on the uterus, helping make the endometrium wall thicker and maintaining that thickness to prepare for possible pregnancy. If a pregnancy does occur, the, uh, the embryo will secrete HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone, which will keep the corpus luteum around, so we keep our progesterone levels high, so we keep suppressing, so we don't release another egg if there's already a pregnancy. Um, however, if there is no pregnancy, the breakdown of the corpus luteum causes a drop in progesterone, which causes a breakdown of the endometrium wall. You know, a drop in progesterone gets rid of this suppression, so we can start releasing FSH and LH again and start the cycle over. Now. With the time we have left, I'm going to show you the two animations that we saw in class that go through the cycle one more time. And by that time, uh, we should have it uh, pretty strong in our head what's going on with the, with the menstrual cycle. And blood, cells, and mucus are expelled through the Ovulation occurs about every 28 days in a regular cycle called the ovarian cycle. Hormones coordinate the ovarian cycle with monthly changes in the uterus, termed the menstrual cycle. The start of the menstrual cycle is defined by the beginning of a woman's menstrual period. The lining of the uterus, called the endometrium, breaks down, and blood, cells, and mucus are expelled through the vagina. This process is called menstruation, and it usually lasts for the first three to five days of the menstrual cycle. The endometrium again thickens in preparation for possible pregnancy. We will combine our discussion of the ovarian and menstrual cycles to show how hormones coordinate the activities of the ovaries and the uterus. The brain controls reproduction, acting via hormones produced by the pituitary gland. While a woman is menstruating, her hypothalamus begins secreting a releasing hormone, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete FSH and LH into the blood. FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, stimulates the growth of an ovarian follicle in the ovary. The follicle consists of a developing egg cell surrounded by cells that nourish and protect it. The developing follicle begins secreting estrogen, a female sex hormone. Estrogen shapes development of the female reproductive system and female secondary sex characteristics such as broad hips and development of the breasts. Its immediate role is to stimulate regrowth of the lining of the uterus in preparation for possible pregnancy. Low levels of estrogen also exert negative feedback on the hypothalamus, keeping blood levels of FSH and LH relatively low. Basically what is going on here is that the brain triggers development of an egg and the follicle containing the egg signals the uterus to prepare to support the development of an embryo. Negative feedback assures that only one follicle develops at a time. As the follicle grows, it secretes more and more estrogen. This stimulates further development and thickening of the uterine lining. Estrogen level reaches a peak just before the midpoint of the cycle. Now response of the hypothalamus and pituitary to estrogen reverses. The higher level of estrogen actually stimulates the hypothalamus to signal the pituitary to secrete a burst of FSH and LH. 
It is the burst of LH that triggers ovulation on about day 14 of the cycle. The ovum develops, the follicle ruptures, and the nearly mature ovum is released from the follicle and swept into the oviduct. LH, or luteinizing hormone, also causes the ruptured follicle to develop into a glandular structure called the corpus luteum. Estrogen and progesterone also exert negative... After ovulation, the corpus luteum continues to secrete estrogen and increasing amounts of a second female hormone called progesterone. Both hormones contribute to further thickening of the uterine lining in preparation for possible pregnancy. Estrogen and progesterone also exert negative feedback on the hypothalamus and pituitary, suppressing FSH and LH secretion. This keeps additional follicles from developing after ovulation. We can summarize ovulation and the following events like this. When the follicle is nearly mature, it signals the hypothalamus to trigger ovulation. The ruptured follicle, now called the corpus luteum, prevents additional follicles from developing and signals the uterus to prepare for implantation and development of an embryo. What happens next depends on whether the ovum is fertilized or not. If the egg is not fertilized, the corpus luteum has a short lifespan. Suppression of LH after ovulation causes the corpus luteum to degenerate. As the corpus luteum's output of estrogen and progesterone drops, two changes occur. The lining of the uterus begins to slough off, the beginning of the menstrual period and start of the next cycle. The drop in estrogen and progesterone also reduces feedback inhibition of the hypothalamus and pituitary. This triggers secretion of FSH and LH which stimulates the development of a new follicle. So if fertilization doesn't occur, the corpus luteum degenerates. Without its hormones, the lining of the uterus breaks down and a new follicle starts to grow. If the egg is fertilized, it starts to develop and implants in the wall of the uterus. The embryo secretes a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG for short. HCG functions like LH to signal the corpus luteum to continue its secretion of estrogen and progesterone. Later, the placenta takes over this function. Progesterone and estrogen maintain the lining of the uterus and suppress the development of any more follicles. In effect, the embryo signals the corpus luteum to stick around, maintaining the uterus for embryonic development and stopping the monthly cycle. Human reproduction is complicated. It depends on precise coordination of the ovaries and uterus in response to hormonal signals orchestrated by the brain. So at this point, you should be able to take all these terms and write in paragraph form what's happening in the human menstrual cycle. Good luck.